Hello, my name is Jack Fotheringham, and I'm the current president of the University of Saskatchewan Space Design Team. The University of Saskatchewan Space Design Team, or USST, is comprised of business students, biology students, physics students, and of course, engineering students from all different departments. The USST was founded in 2005 when we began working on nanosatellites and space elevators. Since then, we've turned our attention to the Mars rover, one of which we've developed here for competition in the ERC in 2015. This rover is known as both Marco Mark II and Saskatchewan, reflecting the name of our province and our uh, post-secondary institution, the University of Saskatchewan. As of right now, the team is comprised of about 25 members, all of whom are very excited and passionate about our space-related projects. On the administrative side of things, we have a handful of executive positions which serve to oversee the finance and administration of the team. Austin Shirley is our VP of Engineering, and he oversees both the mechanical and electrical teams. Nicole Parker is the treasurer and oversees the finances. Daniel Ness is VP of Operations and has a large role with sponsorship and donations. Josh Argonosa serves as the team's secretary, and I'm the president. On the engineering side of things, the team is divided into two groups. We have the mechanical team and the electrical team. The mechanical team lead is Seamus Woodward George, and Liam Bindle is the electrical team lead. The mechanical team obviously focuses on mechanical aspects of the rover, and the electrical team focuses on coding and the electronics. Having already competed in the University Rover Challenge in Utah two times, uh, this year we wanted to find another opportunity to compete on the international stage. The ERC gives us another chance to test our rover's abilities and gives us more experience overall as a team. Our rover performed quite well at the University Rover Challenge, so we knew we had a really good platform to start adapting towards the ERC tasks. One of the critical changes we had to make to our rover is we needed to redesign our radio system in order to adhere to European radio regulations. Another new part for the ERC is the Autonomous Navigation Module. This module contains an RTK GPS system as well as LiDAR on a rotating turret. This is going to allow the rover to track itself within centimeter accuracy as well as pick up objects and obstacles in the distance. With our object detection software as well as navigation software, the rover will find itself an optimal route and drive itself there. We've also modified our arm and sample collection designs in order to merge them into one for the ERC sample collection task. We've also designed custom circuit boards for the arm and for the drive system in order to optimize them, make them more professional looking, as well as add a couple more features such as the voltage sensing on the arm. And of course, there's still one big challenge to face, and that's transporting the rover from the University of Saskatchewan to Poland. In order to do this, we've been talking with our university and customs broker in order to make the process as smooth as possible, but we've also had to make a couple of mechanical changes in order to simplify the disassembly and reassembly process. I think that competing in the ERC in 2015 is important for the USST because it represents the first time, at least since we've been designing Mars rovers, that we'll be able to travel to compete outside of North America. I think this will bring with it a host of new challenges, but it will provide a big opportunity for growth for the team. I know that there are a lot of Polish teams especially that are very competitive, and so I'm looking forward to uh, introducing the team to a new level of competition. I'm excited to go to the European Rover Challenge because it will allow me to see firsthand how a design performs in the field and see the rovers that all the other teams brought to the competition. This knowledge and experience will help me and the USST prepare for future competitions and careers in industry. I'm really looking forward to ERC this year. Uh, it's a great opportunity, uh, not only for myself personally, but also for our team uh, to compete with other student groups from across the world uh, and interact with other students and see the, the diversity in uh, designs and ideas that people have um, for these competitions. Uh, this is an important milestone for us as well because it's the first time our team has done two competitions in a single year. Uh, it's really opened our eyes to how much work is required for us to do uh, and also kind of shown us some different design approaches we could take to make the rover more modular and more efficient so we don't have to spend so much time redesigning things uh, when there's a second competition.
Our rover has a big red safety button, which acts as an emergency battery disconnect. To operate it, all you must do is press it down and the rover will immediately stop and the battery will be disconnected from the rest of the systems. In order to remotely disable the rover, the operator only needs to close down the main software. With a graceful exit, all of the threads and subsystems are shut down cleanly. However, in case of an emergency or a software crash, all of the subsystems have a very short timeout. So, if it does not receive its watchdog packets, it will stop immediately. The rover is operated by a minimum of two people. One person drives the rover through the Oculus Rift head tracked camera and the other person either operates the arm or runs the navigation software. The base station setup is very simple, only requiring two laptops, power cables, an Oculus Rift, as well as antenna cables out to the base station tower. The tower we will be arriving a few days early to build in Poland in order to make transportation a lot easier. Our rover is mainly based around a rocker bogey suspension design. This suspension uses aluminum plate arms on each side, as well as a steel shaft and gearbox in the middle. This synchronizes the arms, so that when one arm is lifted by a rock, the arm on the other side is pressed into the ground to maintain full wheel contact at all times. The rover is supported by a carbon fiber chassis which is very lightweight and hopefully will get us a few extra bonus points during the competition. And the wheels are an in-wheel motor brushed DC variety. They're very lightweight, they have a low stall current, and allow us to make the best use of our battery. The battery we chose is a very large lithium iron phosphate battery. We chose this because it is a lot safer than a comparable power lithium polymer battery. It also gives us pretty good capacity and the rover is able to drive for multiple hours. The rover control system consists of a central Raspberry Pi which branches out to slave microcontrollers each on its own module control board. The rover's top speed is about 1 meter per second, however its motors and motor controllers allow it to maintain the speed over pretty much any type of terrain provided it doesn't get stuck. Our cooling design also allows the motors to be stalled for a fairly long period of time before we need to take a break. The arm is able to rotate continuously thanks to a slip ring on its base, and in its normal range of motion we have made inverse kinematic calculations, which means that we can type in a final position and the arm will find its own path to that point. This is really useful for when we're working on control panels, however we do have the option for manual control when that is required. The gripper is entirely 3D printed, and because of this, we're able to do some interesting things with both range of gripper attachments as well as gripper motion. Because of a clever gearbox we've designed at the base of the wrist, we're able to continuously rotate and open and close at the same time, without twisting wires or risking any sort of tangling. The arm is designed to grip and manipulate 5 kilograms of the end effector. However, the two main linear actuators are a lot more powerful than that, and provided we can get a good grip on something, we can lift something up to 20 kilograms. As mentioned earlier, our soil collection mechanism involves mounting both the arm and the drill at the same time. The drill is actually a soil auger, which allows us to drill deeply and quickly and eject any unwanted topsoil out of the top. We also are attaching small moisture and pH sensors onto our soil auger in order to get a little bit of data about the soil as we drill. Well, I can say that on behalf of the team, all of us are very much looking forward to going to Poland in September of 2015. Thanks for watching our video. Do widzenia!